بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is unit 2 form, meaning and function but before we indulge in the lesson let's revise uh, what you previously uh, took in the writing lesson especially the writing corner uh, if you want to write a formal letter of complaint if you want to write a formal uh, letter to complain about uh, something a complaint letter remember to open in an appropriate way like dear editor dear mr smith and so on state the reason why are you writing and give a brief overview a brief overview of the situation Use phrases to introduce and list additional points, to add up additional points like first of all, moreover, or furthermore, and so on. Use phrases to offer suggestions and solutions to problems like, I suggest that it would be a good idea if, and so on. And sign off in an appropriate way. If you want to end the letter here, sign off in an appropriate way. Uh, with Use with the best wishes, yours sincerely, sincerely, and so on. So these are today's objectives. Use the simple present tense correctly. So we'll be learning about simple present tense. Recognize the usage of present simple and present progressive. So again, we'll be studying present simple and present progressive. Apply time expressions in a present tense sentence. Use the present progressive correctly. Identify time expressions for the present. Use the simple present form correctly and use the present progressive form correctly. So we know now that we'll be learning about, we know now that we'll be learning about the present simple, the present progressive and the time expressions. So beginning here with the simple present tense, the simple present tense. We use the simple present tense. We use the simple present tense for facts, for facts or things that are true and in general. Again, we use the simple present tense for facts or things that are true in general. Like here, for example, the Saudi Rial is the official currency of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Saudi Rial is, this is the present simple here, is the official currency of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It takes one million years for a glass of bottle to decompose. My parents don't read printed newspapers anymore. Does Oman belong to the United Arab Emirates? This is, of course, a question form. So again, we use the simple present tense for facts, facts, or things that are true in general. Facts like when you say uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, water boils so this is the present simple because it's a fact because it's a fact a general truth this is the simple present tense we use the simple present tense to talk about things that are true in general or happening all the time when a thing when uh, a thing happening all the time for example when you say the earth circles the sun this is happening all the time the earth circles the sun every year of course so this is uh, the use of the simple present tense we use it for facts things are true in general or things that happening all the time the simple present versus the present progressive so we have the present simple and the present progressive we'll be learning about them we use the simple present to talk about habits or routines we use the simple present to talk about habits or routines, habits, things that you do every day or routines, it's the same thing maybe, things that you're doing every day. We use the present progressive for actions occurring now, occurring now or for a temporary situation. So we use the present simple to talk about habits or routines. We use the present progressive for, actioning that, for actions that are happening now or that are temporary situations. The, temperature change, the temperatures change with the season of the year. This is habit or routine. Again, the temperatures change with the seasons of the year. Of course, the temperature changes from the winter to the summer. So this is a routine. This is a, a yearly routine, of course. The temperatures in the poles are changing drastically this is happening now. When you say the temperatures in the poles 
are changing. This is happening now. This is happening now, so this is the progressive. John lives in Quebec, but he is studying in France this year. So notice here, John lives in Quebec. This is permanent, this is present simple, this is permanent, but he is studying in France this year. This is temporary. So this sentence combines the use of uh, present uh, simple and the present progressive. John lives in Quebec. This is a fact, but he is studying in France this year. This is the use of progressive because it's a temporary situation. He'll be studying, then he will come back to Quebec. Note here, some verbs are not often used in the progressive form. Again, the note here that some verbs are not often used in the progressive form, like believe, forget, hear, know, like, love, need, prefer, remember, see, understand, want, realize. So these verbs are not often used in the progressive form. Time expressions for the present. Time expressions for the present. We are currently studying for examinations. We are currently studying for examinations. So the word currently here is a time expression, means now. Currently means now. We are currently studying for examinations. At present, at present there are measures in place to tackle climate change. At present, maybe it means these days, nowadays, there are measures in place to tackle climate change. Most people recycle these days. Most people recycle these days. The last example here, air travel is more affordable now than it, than it was in the past. Air travel is more affordable now than it was in the past. So you can see here, time expressions are words in the sentence that tells you when is this happening now, nowadays, currently, at the moment, and so on. Here's a language builder for you, more information. The spelling rules for adding S or ES to simple present verbs used with he, she, and it. So you know, when, when you use the simple present with he, she, or it, we add S or ES. So these are the rules, and we'll be studying them now. Number one, for verbs ending in S, X, and Z, CH, CH, and SH, we add ES. For example, relaxes. Again, verbs ending in S, X, Z, CH, and SH, we add ES. For example, relaxes. When a sentence, uh, when a word ends with S, Z, or CH, SH, we add E. S, like uh, relaxes and boxes and so on. Number two, for verbs and uh, for verbs do and go, do and go, we add ES. Of course, we know does and goes, does and goes, do and go, we add ES. Number three, for verbs ending in a consonant plus Y, change the Y into I and add ES, like study becomes studies. So, when a verb ending in a consonant plus Y, we change the Y into I and add ES, like the word studies. Number four, verbs ending in a vowel plus Y, we just add S, like enjoy becomes enjoys or play becomes plays, and so on. Number five, for all other verbs, we just add S, like designs, organize, and so on. Exercise A here, complete the sentences with the words in the parenthesis. Use the simple present or the present progressive of the verb. So here, you complete the sentences with the words in the parenthesis. Use simple present or present progressive of the verbs. For example, number one here, water at 100 degrees Celsius. And the verb here is boil. I think I did that in the beginning of this lesson. Yes, that's correct. The answer is boils. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, or you can say 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a fact. That's why we use the simple present. Number two, the water, please turn it off. 
the water please turn it off so he's talking about now so and the verb is boil so yes very good the water is boiling so because we're talking about thing a thing that happening now and not a fact number three the scientists the cause of the problem not understand the scientists the cause of the problem and the verb here the verb here not negative and the verb understand so what's the answer here let's check the correct answer don't understand the cause of the problem the scientists don't understand the cause of the uh, problem number four in your country in winter this is a question here in your country in winter it snow it snow so the question is yes does it snow does it snow in your country in winter so he's asking here about a routine or a fact about your country does it snow in your country in winter number five the moon around the earth go the moon around the earth and the verb go so what's the answer here you can say this is a routine here yes the moon goes around the earth this is a routine for the moon the moon goes around uh, the earth number six what of my idea you think what of my idea and here we have the verb uh, think and the word you so the answer here is yes what do you think of my idea number seven currently the number of immigrants in our country increase currently currently this is a time stamp here currently time expression the number of immigrants in our country yes is increasing we use the, uh, the progressive here number eight peop most people how important it is to conserve energy these days and the verb is realize so the answer is yes most people realize how important it is to conserve energy these days number nine dubai is part of the uae but it as many oil reserves as abu dhabi not have again dubai is part of the uae but it as many uh, as many oil reserves as abu dhabi and we have the negative word not and the verb have yes doesn't have this is a fact here it doesn't have as many oil reserves as abu dhabi so we're talking about a fact number 10 ahmed has a part-time job on saturdays but he today and not work again ahmed has a part-time job on saturdays but he today yes he isn't working today so we use the progressive because we're talking about uh, uh, something that's happening today Exercise B, look at the words in the box describing ge uh, geographical features and green issues. Write sentences about some of the environmental problems the world is facing. Use the present simple and the present progressive tense. Here's an uh, already done example for you. Flying is becoming a popular way to travel these days. This increases a person's uh, carbon footprint on quite a massive scale. So flying is becoming... This is the progressive here, a popular way to travel these days. This, of course, is a time exp ex expression. This increases, this is a fact here, this is the simple present, a person's carbon footprint on quite a massive scale. So we can use here the, uh, some of these words, climate change, polar ice caps, oceans and fishing, carbon footprint, air travel, deforestation, des uh, deserts, erosion, flooding, lakes, pollution, rivers, and so on. So you can use any of these uh, words or uh, any of these words to write maybe one or two lines talking about uh, describing geographical features or green issues. I'm just going to take one here. For example, you can say climate change is getting more and more serious every year because 
it affects us all. Again, climate change, I'm talking about climate change here, is getting more and more serious every year. It affects us all. So I use the present progressive and the present simple. And you can continue with all of them. Here's a language builder for you. We use the simple present to talk about permanent actions like habits or routines. We often use frequency expressions such as always, usually, often, rarely, never, every day, once a month, on weekends. We also use the present progressive to talk about temporary actions that are happening now. We often use time expressions like right now, now, at the moment. When you say, for example, I'm talking on the phone right now. So this is a time expression with the progressive. Another language builder here, we use the present perfect to talk about actions that have happened at an indefinite time in the past or actions that have happened from the past up to now, from the past until now. We often use time expressions such as ever, never, so far, or yet. We also use the simple past to talk about actions that were completed in the past. We use simple past with actions that are done, completed. We often use time expressions such as yesterday, last week, two days ago, a year ago, in the 19th century, in, to, in 2014, and so on. Continuing with our lesson here, conditional sentences with present and future forms. You can use conditional sentences with if to talk about causes and results. We use conditional sentences with if. So we talk about cause and a result. The result and the cause of this result using the conditional if. The present facts, we use the simple present tense in both clauses. In present facts, we use the simple present tense in both clauses. The first clause and the second clause. If you cook an egg in the microwave, it explodes. If you cook an egg in the microwave, it explodes. So notice in both, ten, in, in both clauses, we use the simple present because this is a present fact. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice or you can say it freezes. So this, uh, if, when we talk about present facts, we put the simple present tense in both clauses. What about if we talk about future facts? We use the simple present in the if clause and the future be, uh, be going to or will in the result clause. Again, if we're talking about future facts, what will happen in the future, use the simple present in the if clause. In the if clause, we use the simple present and the future and the future with be going to or will in the result clause. Let's look at some examples here. If we don't take measures now, so this is the if clause, we use the simple present. If we don't take measures now, so now we're going to the result clause. The oceans will, this is the future will, the oceans will soon be completely depleted of fish. Another example here, if Imad doesn't go to college, again, if Imad doesn't go, using the simple present in the if clause, he's going to be very sorry. He's going to be, the result clause, he's going to be very sorry. So we use going to for the future. Also here we have may and might. We use may and might in the result clause to suggest something is possible but not certain. So we use may, we use may or might in the result clause, not the if clause, the result clause, just to show that something that might happen, as said here, something that is possible but not certain. If we are certain, we use will. If we are not certain, maybe it's possible, we use may or might. For example here, if Nora doesn't, go, doesn't do the homework, she may fail the class. She may fail the class. Again, if Nora doesn't do the homework, she may fail the class. We are not certain that she will fail. She may fail the class. If Imad doesn't, do the, doesn't go to college, he might not get a good job. If Imad doesn't go to college, 
he might not get a good job. So we use may or might when we are not certain about the result. Again here, we uh, when we use if to talk about present facts, if means whenever. When we talk about present facts, if means whenever. When we use if to talk about the future, if means something that may or may not happen. When you use the simple present in the if clause, even though we are talking about the future, of course, this is mentioned before. There is a difference in meaning between an if clause plus may and might. The second event is not certain to happen if the event is in the if clause happens. And if uh, plus the clause and will, the second event is certain to happen. As mentioned before, when, you, when in the result clause, if we say will, we know that this is what's going to happen. If you say may or might, we are not sure. In the question form of uh, the WH question, can come before or after the if clause. For example here, if Nora doesn't do her homework, she may fail the class. So let's turn this into question form. What will happen if Nora doesn't, go, doesn't do her homework? Again, what will happen if Nora doesn't do her homework or if Nora doesn't do her homework, what will happen? So in the question form, the WH question can come before or after the F clause, like these examples here. Jumping to I'd rather here, we use I'd rather, of course I'd rather is a short for I would rather, to talk about preferences. When you say I'd rather, it means that you choose to do that, your preference is to do this thing. For example here, would you, would you rather go to the mall right now or later? You say, I'd rather go now. So, I'd rather, I would rather to talk about your preference. Would rather means to prefer. We use the base form of the verb after would rather, but the infinitive after prefer. The negative of would, the negative of would rather is would rather not. Remember this. The negative of would rather is would rather not. For example, I would rather not drive there. You don't say I don't rather, you say I would rather not. So this is the negative form of would rather. Let's answer the question here. Complete the sentences about facts. Use the simple present or will in the second clause. Number one, if you heat water to 100 degrees Celsius, it boil. So, if you, yes, heat water to 100 degrees Celsius, it boils. It boils. Very good. Number two, if they climb up to 4,000 meters, they need oxygen. So, again, use the simple present or will in the second clause. So, if they climb up to 4,000 meters, they, do we say need or will need? That's excellent. Will need. They will need oxygen. Number three, if you not cross, yes, that's correct. If you don't cross its path, the snake not bite, that's correct. Will not bite you or you can say won't bite you. Number four, if we get this HD television, Yes, if we get this HD television, we see the game better. Do we see we see or we will see? Yes, we will see the game better. Number five, if you mix flour and water, if you mix flour and water, you, very good, you end up with butter. You end up with butter. Of course, this is a fact here. If you mix flour and water, you end up with butter. Number six, if he... That's correct. Doesn't obey the speed limit. He, very good, will get a ticket. Exercise D here with a partner. Work with a partner. Say what will or might happen in the following situations. If you don't reduce carbon CO2 emissions, you can, of course, you can uh, continue this by yourself. So, for example, I, I wrote in the first one, if, you, if we don't reduce carbon emissions, what will happen? Global warming will get worse. Of course, you can answer it as you wish. Number two, if we, if we teach young children in school about green issues, if we teach them about green issues, going green, 
what will happen? The clause here. Yes, they will know better how to protect the environment in the future. Number three, if we find, if we find alternative sources of energy, this is the if clause. What about the result clause? If you find alternative sources of energy, what will happen? I wrote, we will reduce our carbon emissions. If we dump chemicals into river, of course, bad things will happen. I wrote, the fish will die. This is a fact here. If we take the bus to school, so give me a result clause here. If we take the bus to school, we will save money on petrol. Number six, if we have time, if we have time, what would you do? Of course, you'd do anything. I wrote, we can come up with more ideas to save the environment. And seven and eight, you can write your own idea, the if clause and the result clause. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik. Ashadu la lanta astaghfirullah wa kutubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.